A lot of parents are like, I don't want to deal with the drama. Oh, oh. We, we, had just, a, we had a, a friend who told us about a conversation he had at a high school event. And the friend said he was standing with a group of parents and one of the dads was like, man, I don't even want to know what my son's doing in that room with his computer. I don't even want to know what all's on his phone. Are you kidding me? Yes, you do want to know yes. because the wolf is eating the child That's alive. That's right. We're parents. Last time I checked, we own the phone. Jesus said the following words in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, Jesus went on. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to fight off the wolf of wokeism. Because if the truth, I mean, was, if the truth was really known, we are fighting, we're in a fight, and this wolf is very cunning, smart, and he's stalking not only you and me, also our families. Wokeism, the wolf of wokeism. I wanna tell you just straight up that as Ed and I worked on this message and put our thoughts together according to what God's word says, it did not come easy. And by that I mean that we, we just have a heavy, heavy, heavy burden on what we're sharing with you today because this is life and death. And I'm afraid that many parents um, whether you're a single parent, a blended family, you know, a nuclear family, whatever, that there are some families and parents that are really in tune and you're engaged and you're, you're aware of the wolf. Others are maybe sleepwalking. I don't know if we have any sleepwalkers in the house. Does anyone sleepwalk? Let's, let's be honest. Sleepwalker. Anybody sleep, sleepwalk? Now, here? we had a child that okay, was a, thank you for a your honesty. sleepwalker. Thank you very much. A sleepwalker is, can kind of appear like they know what they're doing, they yeah. have a direction, they know what they're, where they're going, but if you call out the name or say, you know, hey, what did I, they don't respond. It's just like they're unaware of what's going on, even though they're walking. It's like a zombie kind of. Maybe we have some zombie-like parents who just <laughs> need to wake up because Parents, it's, it's not the kid's responsibility. I mean, they're the innocents in this. In fact, Jesus said, come to me as a child with a childlike attitude because children are open, they want to hear, they want to learn. I mean, they're inquisitive. And Jesus said, that's the attitude that we and should have. And we have an have. opportunity, Lisa, to shepherd them. Yes. Jesus is our good shepherd. And as parents, we shepherd our kids. And if you think about this, this word picture just for a second. A good shepherd carried a staff. A staff was used for direction, also for discipline. Being a parent is, is not for cowards, it's not easy, and some of us think, well, I'm a parent because I have reproduced. No, it's more than that. I understand, yeah, on one hand, you are a parent, but I mean, parenting is something we've discovered that never, ever, Stops, And that's awesome. Here, I'm a 61 model, and Lisa is a 60 model. We still parent in certain ways. Now, we don't say, Landra, time out. We don't say, EJ, go to your room. I don't mean that. I'm saying, though, when questions are hanging in the balance and they want our opinions, we'll give them our opinions. We sometimes will we'll guide them in areas that, that we kind of know about because we've lived longer than them. So, so parenting, Lisa, is such, is such a responsibility. We are literally shepherding our little lambs. And when they are in their young years, I mean, this is where it's so vital. And we're gonna unpack some things today. I mean, it's not like a cute little outline. It's not like three points for you to remember. I mean, we're talking about hard stuff. 
Parenting's not for lightweights. Ed and I got a Peloton. And I Anybody love, have a Peloton, man? I love Are those the Peloton. Great? I love the Peloton, yeah. although I had to be persuaded. <laughs> and um, I have difficult knees and pain in my knees. So Ed was like, I really think it would help. And the orthopedist said, if you build your quads, it'll help your knee pain. And I was like, okay, finally, Ed Googled, you know, is the Peloton okay for people with knee problems? I mean, he really wanted me to ride the Peloton. So <laughs> anyway, I, I finally succumbed and I got on there and I'm thinking, it looks so easy, 20 minutes. You just have to, some of the workouts are 10 yeah. minutes. I mean, it's so easy. And then you have Leanne Hainsby, my, my trainer of choice. You know why? Because she has a British accent. She looks, you know, it kind of sounds like Mary Poppins is teaching you and she's encouraging. Some of the instructors are not real nice and I need yeah. encouragement. And so, you know, she's on there with her British accent and you get on there and you're thinking, oh, this is good. We're getting ready for 20 efforts and, and you just pace yourself and oh my goodness, you're beginning to sparkle. And I'm like, sparkle? sparkle. I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> I mean, it is so, but at least she sounds good. And I'm, and 20 minutes, that's all you got to do. And it sounds so easy. It's not parenting. Sometimes we think, oh, it's so cute. We have these precious children that we dress up and they look so good in their Sunday best or whatever. It's not easy. And it's it begins, easy. at least the parenting begins with understanding you're a parent and then understanding what it means to be a parent. I think if I ask all of the parents here, hey, define parenting, we would give some sort of a definition. Well, if we really think about it, we need to think how we think. The definition emerges from the Bible because God is the one who instigated, made up, created the family. Lisa and I have written about this in our book, Kid CEO and other books, but let me give you a definition. And this definition is in our book, but also we've elaborated on it. Here it is, parenting is teaching and training your kids to leave. Spouses stay, kids leave. But they don't ever really leave, but I think you know what I'm talking about. To leave and love the Lord with all of their hearts. So I'm teaching and training my kids, I'm shepherding them to leave and to love the Lord with all of their hearts. That definition is based on four scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter six, which is teaching, Proverbs 22, which is training, Genesis 2, which is leaving, and Matthew 22, which is loving the Lord with all of our heart. That is a major role, and, and, and that's like the soul of the family, the leader, the shepherd. That's right. So as we begin this talk about safeguarding your family and your children against wokeism, let's think about that wolf picture um, that Ed brought. I love to take my grandchildren to the zoo. We're members of the Dallas... That's why I wore this safari outfit. jacket. <laughs> His zookeeper shirt. That's not jacket. true. It just, it just happened. I love to take them to the zoo, yeah. and you know they're, they're a little bit active. You know They're five, uh, four two, two, and then Bear is a little bit young to go to the zoo yet, but he, he's not quite a year old. You love the zoo though, Lisa. I love you the love zoo, it. I do. And so when I take them, I, I don't take them all at once, but when I take them in pairs, uh, I watch them like a hawk. I mean, I'm watching them because, you know, there's some dangerous things at the zoo. Yes. And the worst case scenario would be if one of them escaped my grip, literal grip, yeah. and ran and found their way into one of the habitats. It, that habitat is not intended for my grandchildren. We're supposed to see it, know that it's there, maybe enjoy looking at a wild animal, but not to be a part of their habitat. And I'm afraid parents, as we have been um, asleep, so to speak, to what's going on in our culture, we have let go of their hands and we've allowed them to go dangerously close, if not into the habitat. Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, there's a wolf den there. Uh, play football there and, 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 and you can club cheer there right in front of the wolf's den. No one would do that. No thinking parent would do that. When we think though about the wolf of wokeism, it's, it's, a, it's a real deal. Now I know some of you are like, oh come on, wokeism, is it even real? I mean, what is it? Others are like, oh, it's real, I understand it. I'm telling you, 
it is real. It's, it's basically, and I've said this over and over, it's neo-Marxism, it's neo-paganism. It is against the gospel at every turn. Wokeism puts emotion over truth. Wokeism basically concentrates on your race, which is a man-made construct. Race is not mentioned in scripture the way the wokers talk about it. It's also about body parts. Do I have boy parts or girl parts? And then how we use those parts. That is what wokeism has done. It's dumbed us down to that. And when you compare that to our identity in Christ, what? I'm not gonna let this wave of wokeism That's right. define who I am. But we have to know we have to understand what our role is. Parents, our, we have the number one role and goal as a parent is to teach and train our children to leave and to love the Lord, their God, with all their heart, soul, and strength. And it's not just strength. to be their friend. No, 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 Or no. their buddy no, we, or their homie. No, no, no. No. It's but to be a parent. It's to be a parent. You're the number one source. and. Deuteronomy chapter six is what we're gonna unpack a little bit today. And Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Bible. It's in the Old Testament, if you're not familiar with that. It's in the Old Testament. You might be thinking, well, what in the world does Deuteronomy have to do with wokeism? I like Deuteronomy, dude. Yeah, dude, Deuteronomy. The dude we're talking about is Moses. I just thought that up, dude, Deuteronomy. But it's D-E-U-T, I know, I know, but it sounds... Just, Sounds like just that, wanting to make sure. Okay. Okay. So Deuteronomy is like, Deuteronomy. What, what do you mean? I mean, Moses is giving instructions to the children of Israel and, you know, they lived in tents. They were basically Bedouins. You know, we went camping a couple days ago, Lisa and I. One night, we slept in a tent. We did. It was great. It was fun. And it was good because it was one night. I just have never really camped before. <laughs> What'd For those say? of you who really enjoy sleeping out under the stars, I just, I applaud you and I enjoy it yeah. for one night. Um, yeah. But I did go fly fishing for the first time she in my did. life. I caught trout for the first time. How about time. that? And when I, we were up in the Northwest and when I got up out of the tent that morning, I walked out and 12 feet from me was a bull moose. About 2,000 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> if you've never she was seen like, these. Ah! <laughs> There's this big old. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know what that has to do with Deuteronomy. Oh, no, I just thought about it. Yeah, the intense. That's what they happened. They were intense, to it. yes. The, yes. So you think about it. They didn't have kids with cell phones who were being exposed no. to enormously uh, dangerous things. And yet, Moses gives an instruction that is just as applicable today as it was back then. That's right. Why? Why? because Moses was addressing wokeism. He was addressing wokeism because in the previous chapters, the children of Israel had, in fact, it says in chapter five, it says that they, they were looking to the right and looking to the left and they had taken their eyes off God. And that's and what wokeism is. They, they were yeah. dealing with idolatry and paganism. We call it neo-paganism now. The new paganism, yeah, neo-new. And, and new. idolatry is anything that takes your main focus off of God. So Moses is giving this directive to the children of Israel because it was life and death. And this is what he says. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then he segues, so see, that's to the adults in the situation, that's to the parents. He's saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, uh, mind, and strength. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's everything we are. And I wanna pause here because we have a lot of people in this room who call themselves Christians. We're, we're Christ followers. There's some who may just be coming to church and you have not made a decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. And we just want you to lean in right now. But for those of us who call ourselves Christians, it is time for you to talk the talk. Wait a minute, stop. I gotta, I gotta interrupt you. Coach Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> there was a slight applause. Coach Jim, <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and predict it now. I've done this for the last 27 years. The Cowboys will win the Super Bowl. One year I'm going to be right. Anyway, Coach Jimmy Johnson, 
I, I, we were, Lisa and I were looking up famous quotes from Jimmy Johnson, one of them. How about them cowboys? That's pretty good, isn't it? It's not as good as your Leanne Hainsby. Yeah, but, but, well. but my favorite Jimmy Johnson quote, listen to this, kids. You gotta talk the talk and walk the walk. And basically, Deuteronomy is saying you gotta talk the talk and walk the walk. If Did he have some yourself, hair, Jimmy Johnson? Just some, if you, I told you I ran into him and I thought we would have some kind of commonality. I, I saw him in Florida. I go, Coach Johnson trying to, you know. I go, and he kind of looked at me like, who is this idiot? Then I go, uh, I did Troy Aikman's wedding and Troy and I have been friends for years. That's good, great. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough common bond there. Is that pathetic? <laughs> no, okay, so. No, I love Jimmy, but you know, maybe he, you I just came gone, on a little bit strong. You whatever. should have gone with the silver hair. I know, I should. Well, our hair that. matches, but yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. How many times have you walked up to a celebrity and you kind of, you know, maybe you've said the wrong things or you stumbled over your words or whatever? I have, several times. Anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. Gotta walk the walk and talk the talk. Talk the talk and walk the walk. That's right. That's right. And as parents, too, we are models. Check this out. I'll tell you something else. Fellowship Church, early, early on, you know, we, we started the church and it just, you know, blew up and everything. And, and so we had opportunities to, to, to be interviewed by some people, whatever. One day, they asked us to go on this television show. Ask me because you were at home, but they asked me to be on the television show, Christian kind of thing, talking about Fellowship Church. Well, lo and behold, one of the guests along with me was a supermodel. And most of you know her, but her name doesn't matter. Okay, she'd made a fortune just doing this. You know? And I'm thinking, this girl is a multi-squillionaire and all she's done is just model. Walk, walk the just runway. Walk. Parents, 24 seven. Walk the runway. Modeling. Talk the talk, talk and the walk talk the and walk. Talk the talk and walk the walk. And what is your talk? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. That's it. That's it. And I'm afraid we have crowded our calendars out with things that don't, don't uh, push that ball forward down yes. the field since we're talking about football. I think we have maybe crowded out all of the times that we can sit with our children, that we can stand with our children, mm -hmm. that we can be with them around a table talking. Because it says, if following that, it says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Pretty much that's 24 seven. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your Whoa. houses. This that's is like, modeling, isn't it? This is like HGTV. Put it on your door frames and on your gates. This is our responsibility. Parents, yeah. you've got to know your role and your goal when you're dealing with wokeism. Know your role and your goal. So that's the first way to fight the wolf of wokeism. Of wokeism. The second way, Lisa, is to orbit all of our conversations around the biblical worldview. Yes. Now, 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 what is that, okay? Thoughts. You're gonna hear all sorts of thoughts from your kids, from knee high to tree high. They're gonna share thoughts. Thoughts about school, thoughts about this teacher or professor, or thoughts about the JV volleyball team, or thoughts about whatever it is. All of these thoughts, thoughts that someone in the class has, has just said, okay, I'm gay. Uh, someone else, maybe they have a friend, they're like, I'm a guy, but I'm identifying as a girl. All sorts of thoughts are gonna flow in this family dynamic. And if they're not flowing, make sure they flow. How do you do that? Just ask. Ask, listen, 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 ask. And you ask the right people the right questions, you'll get the right answers. And we have to ask our kids That's right. to talk. So through the thoughts, we take those thoughts, and the next thing we do is we put them through our identity in Christ. I talked about it earlier. This is, is, is like a colander, right? It, it, it's a like a, a, a saying, so to speak. We put those thoughts through our biblical worldview. That's right. Now, how do you do that? So your identity in Christ. Um, well, I mean, it's through conversation, but yes. it's also about seeing their, you know, whenever you have thoughts and then you talk about their identity in Christ, mm -hmm. because we as a family have a biblical worldview. It's a, it's not a judging um, attitude. It's a loving attitude with discernment. Like, for example, is our identity in Christ 
blows away anything the wolf of wokeism can throw our way. If you begin just to think and, and talk those thoughts through, but it's important too, because the next thing too is emotion. Ooh, emotion. We all have emotions. God has feelings too. How do you process emotion? Because again, let's go with the wokeism. The wokers put emotion over truth. Mm -hmm. And then they say, the way I feel is truth. Here I'm developing as a man, and I stopped the development, which is, is ridiculous, and now I'm identifying as a woman. I mean, I'm still a man, but I'm, but I'm feeling that I'm identifying as a woman. How do you process that as a parent? That's a hard question that I ask my lovely wife, isn't it? So, how, how, do you, how, do you say, how do you say that? How, how do you process that? With any emotion that your child expresses or is going through, you validate it. You let them know their emotions are important to you. You don't yes. shut them down, say, no, 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 you can't say that, da, da. Listen and validate their emotion. Then you separate That's emotion good. From truth. Say that See? again. Separate emotion from, from truth. truth. So you don't let them camp out. No. In emotion, you guide them into truth. And then you educate and them. And a lot of us, do. a lot of parents are like, I don't want to deal with the drama. Oh, oh we, we had, just, a, we had a, a friend who told us about a conversation he had at a high school event and the friend said he was standing with a group of parents and one of the dads was like, man, I don't even want to know what my son's doing in that room with his computer. I don't even want to know what all's on his phone. Are you kidding me? Yes, you do want to know yes. because the wolf is eating the child That's alive. That's right. So, and Lisa, we're parents. Last time I checked, we own the phone. We that. own the house or the apartment, you know? Yeah. So now again, once they leave, okay, that's another situation. But, but we're guiding them yeah. to understand how we function from a biblical worldview. So we go from thoughts to our identity in Christ, to the emotions, to the truth of God's word. And it's the best. Which segues into how we live our lives, our behavior. So there are, this sounds like boom, 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 we've got this down. No, it's not as easy as all that. It's like the Peloton. It's, it's tough, but if you can, just turn our voices into the British accent of Leanne Hainsby and maybe it'll sound a little bit better. But we have got to bring this biblical worldview into our children. Again, go back to Deuteronomy 6, chapter, verse four. It starts with you. It starts with you. If you are going to have a child, I, I'll just say this, when, when babies are born, we as parents, I mean, everybody's so excited. You're just like, you know, reading everything. You, you're, you know, making the house safe. Oh, yeah. You put little things in the plugs, cabinet locks, you know, you're doing sleep training, making sure they're not allergic to stuff. I mean, what we put into the thought process into an infant, into their little toddler years. Unreal. And then it's like, do we get just tired and exhausted and decide, oh, well, now they're going to go to school. Now somebody else is going to take I just care turn them over to the school. Turn them over to the church. No, Turn, yeah. no, it gets more difficult and difficult. And we're living in a culture today where sin is celebrated. So we've got to be more diligent and more Isn't that uh, crazy? It, it's more truly, than ever. It's truly celebrated. It and, is. and Lisa, when, when a child does go off the ranch a little bit, I like what we've been talking about. We don't yes. change our convictions For because they've gone off the ranch. We, we don't. So we your, your child, love them, Yes. we accept them, no matter what. It doesn't mean, though, we have to applaud yeah! their simple behavior. I mean, I don't always applaud my behavior. <laughs> Neither do I, but. <laughs> That's true, it's very true. That's okay, no, I'm, I'm just I'm, jesting, I'm, right? I'm, but I'm, always we wanna talk thoughtfully and lovingly, but truthfully to our children. 
I remember uh, about a year and a half ago, I posted something on Instagram. Now I post a lot of stuff about our family. I post about things going on at the church and most of it is very uplifting and you know positive. And, but I was just very disturbed about um, a drag queen story hour that was happening at our Dallas Public Library. Cause I'm, I'm a library geek. I got my library card, just like I got my zoo membership. I go to the library, I'm a page turner. So, you know, I wipe the books down with a wipe and then I start that's reading. Good. Okay, so I might be a little germaphobe, but anyway. That's You've always not had the, great that's, hygiene, I appreciate that's that's that. That's not the point. So I, I was really disturbed. I was like, are you kidding me? Story time. And so I posted this and just said, you know, what is our culture coming to? We've lost our identity, you know, is being shifted, all these different things. And many positive comments, but there were a few comments, you know, criticizing me for, for putting political views from a Christian perspective, which that's a joke. If the yeah. Bible talks about it, that's we right. will talk about it. So one woman and i felt her heart she said my daughter came out of the closet she's chosen an alternative lifestyle she's gay i feel like your words are hateful i just can't um, i want to celebrate her choices and be be loving and i just was so badly wanted to respond but the instagram is not a place for arguing or responding or all no. this and my my response would not have been argumentative it would be that I identify with her. Because I had a daughter who had an addiction and that was a lifestyle that I would never have chosen for her, ever. And I knew that it was detrimental to our health. I, I stood on conviction. I, I didn't love her less, but I stood on conviction because that was not God's best for her life. So I know what this mom is feeling, I do. You cannot change your conviction based on your child's choices. Stick to the biblical worldview and, and prayerfully they will see because of your love, not that you're celebrating, but because of your love, prayerfully they will see how God's way is loving, is the best way for That's their right. life. And we, Liz, also too, as, as parents, we have the opportunity to engage the culture, yes. to get involved on the local level, to know about what our kids are learning in school, to understand the curriculum, to talk to, to the teachers, and, and all of those things, that's part of shepherding yes, and we our have, little lambs. We have been tricked into thinking that we don't have a right to go to our children's school. I, if I put a million dollars, which I wish I could, into the bank, and the bank said, you can't come see the money, you can't come into our lobby, you can't do this or that. I'm gonna say, whoa, 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 my, my money's not gonna be in your bank. The most valuable thing that Ed and I have outside of our relationship with God and our marriage is our children. So when I drop my children off at school, you better believe I'm gonna know what they're getting for eight hours Woo. of the day. And okay, I, Lisa. And, and okay. also, hold, hold that oh, thought, oh. also, also, the library books that they're reading mm -hmm. and little statements that they make about conversations. We have got to be engaged. We had voter registration out in our lobby and some of the you know, conversations that we had about whether or not to do that was, well, I don't, you know, we don't want this to be political. We don't want to think, people think, you know, we're trying to persuade the vote. This is not about persuading a vote. This is for saying, this is what the Bible says. You better be voting accordingly from the local level. It's not necessarily about the national level. It's about the local level, your school board, your city council, because they have the power to dictate what your child is learning in school. Some of you have choices with school. You, have a, uh, you maybe are living in a neighborhood where you're in a great public school, some do not. You might have the opportunity to send your children to a private school. Just because it's a private school does not mean that it is a Christian school. So be very, very careful. That's a we fact, had a conversation Jack. with our neighbor um, and their child goes to a Christian school in Dallas and it was as woke as you can go. So that, that doesn't necessarily- And, and they, they aren't followers they are of Christ. They are not followers of Christ, but it's and they disturbing even them. Are, they were asking us, what do we do? 
I mean, what is this system? And we had an opportunity to yes. share a little bit about the wolf of wokeism. Yeah, in the biblical worldview. Yeah. Others of you have an opportunity to homeschool. I homeschooled, I was not good at it. I'm a teacher by trade. I homeschooled for two years and the twins had to repeat second grade. So <laughs> when they went back to she school. She tried though, it was great. I tried. I tried, but you need Young to Young elementary closed down after two years. <laughs> it had a great run. Our football team was unbelievable. <laughs> and we I'll beat just, Alabama by yeah. two points. A lot of people don't know that, but yeah, I remember. I we, would say I learned a lot. Them, not so much. But um, explore your options. And then here's a tough one. Sometimes we think, well, both mom and dad need to work because we just, we have to. Ask yourself the question, do you really have to? Is it more for your comfort level and for the things that you want to do, or is it because you really need to put food on the table? Because sometimes it's a matter of making those hard decisions in order to protect your child from the wolf habitat. And we are at a critical juncture in our culture today where we have got to stand tall and be engaged. Don't be tricked into thinking that you don't have the right. You have more right than anyone to be involved in your child's life. So when we have questions or thoughts come up about race, forget race. Think about your uniqueness in Christ. Think about your unique culture. That's, that's great. When it comes to sex, God is pro-sex. He invented it. It's to be practiced within the confines and covenant of marriage. And all you have to do is just look out on horizon line and see what the sexual revolution from the 60s gave us. It gave us serious yeah. pollution. Yeah. You have questions about gender, uniquely male, uniquely female. You have questions about the love of God. God loves everyone. We accept everyone. Doesn't mean we applaud their behavior. So these things will come up and, and thinking parents allow their children to think, yet, like the good shepherd, we're directing them mm -hmm. and guiding them. I, you know, I've done a lot of research on sheep because the Bible talks a lot about sheep. It compares you and me to sheep, and sheep are not always the smartest, and sheep tend to, to do things that are a little bit unique. This week, though, I did something I've never done before. I Googled the defense mechanisms of the sheep. Now, that's an interesting study. Here's what sheep do. I didn't know this. They have amazing eyesight. They can hear ridiculously well. They also can smell. <laughs> they can detect a wolf 1,200 to 1,500 yards away, a sheep. Then though, if the wolf gets closer, they congregate, they gather. It's a natural instinct. Isn't that powerful? I thought about the church. I thought about seeing, seeing the worldview, the way God wants us to see it. We're made that way. Hearing, hearing the Holy Spirit of God, hearing God's word. Smelling, having that discernment to know, uh-oh, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And then, not you, and then gathering <laughs> together. Because the good shepherd is gonna lead your family and mine to greatness. Did you hear me? The good shepherd, and we can model this, will lead those little lambs, our flock, to greatness. What is greatness? Living in the center of God's will. I'm gonna ask the parents to do something. If you are a mom or dad, single parent, blended family parent, and you have 2.5 kids, whatever, I'm gonna ask you to stand right now because Lisa and I want to pray just for you. Just the moms and dads. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all of these powerful parents, these, these shepherds of, of the flocks that you've given them. I pray, God, for endurance. I pray for discernment. I pray for a biblical worldview. I pray for just amazing blessings and prosperity and understanding of your will over every parent and every child here. We ask these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you wanna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life.